Thank you so much, sir. Now I request respected Mr. Sanjay Ghosh to come on the dais and address the gathering. Hi, good morning. I was just telling Shamji that he can take 10 minutes of mine and speak because really, actually, uh, to borrow a cricket ter terminology, if you had the Virat Kohli in the Supreme Court, it was Mr. Devan. He's the only one who actually went hammer on tongs, pointing out the, uh, in his view, the, uh, the difficulties which we would have with Aadhaar. Now, personally, I feel totally incompetent to address you. I hardly have worked on this, and I actually had tried to sit out on this because I personally feel very conflicted. And my conflict I found in today's, is in all the papers today, so, but I, I got you the mail today because the mail today has it in one page. All the other papers, I, I guess five papers on a, on a Saturday, and all of them have it. Mail today has it in one page, so I got it for you. Now, the top article says, which is what Mr. Shamdevan was trying to caution you about, is unique data is now available for five rupees. So all, it was 500, yes, day before yesterday, today it's five rupees. So you give five rupees and all your data, pan, bank, iris, handprint, everything you can get for five rupees. However, why the conflict is below this is another story which says India has 8,000 ghost teachers, 80,000 ghost teachers. And these 80,000 ghost teachers have been caught because of Aadhaar. Because of Aadhaar, they have been able to find that actually 80,000 false salaries were being taken every month from government exchequer. So this is the conflict which really is something which the Supreme Court ultimately has to decide because 1,000 pages later, I'm a layman and I'm, you know, it's for me, it is actually a privilege to share the stage with Mr. Devan. I, I don't understand that much of constitutional law, but I, even I feel that 1,000 pages of what, ultimately? Because according to me, it's a no-brainer that everyone should have the right to privacy. But incidentally, uh, you know, so I will, you know, try to just flag a few basic issues. The first basic issue is, you all are aware the, the Bollywood uh, economy uh, correlation. So you had in the 50s all those movies about dharti and all that. In the 60s you had Nanna Munne Rai Hai. In the 70s you had the angry young man and the strikes, Kala Pathar. And then in the 90s you had Karan Johar's sophisticated films. They actually mirrored the society, right? If you see how the economic development happened, Bollywood actually mirrored that. So the movies you saw in the Times were the mirror of that. So similarly in law, you actually have the Supreme Court mirroring the economics of the Times. So you had in the 1950s, Bela Banerjee and all those land reform cases. Then slowly, slowly it went to issues of bank, like Kavasji, bank nationalization. Then you had Sindhya's privy purses. Then slowly in the 90s, it came to jobs. And now, in this, the, the, the last year, what we have dealt with is in the, in the field of, primarily in the field of technology. So you see there is, a, the court is also grappling with and dealing with issues of fundamental rights, mirroring the economics of the time. So before I go further, I just wanted to read just one small paragraph, and it's not important, so far, the legal principle is concerned, but it is important to set the tone. And that is para 589 of Justice Call's separate concurring opinion. Uh, if, with your permission, I'll read this. It says, recently it is pointed out that Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Facebook, the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer, has no inventory. And Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. Something interesting is happening. Uber knows our whereabouts and places we frequent. Facebook at least knows who are our friends. Alibaba knows our shopping habits. Airbnb knows where we are traveling to. Social network providers, search engines, email service providers, messaging applications are all further examples of non-state actors having extensive knowledge of our movements, financial transactions, conversations, personal and professional. So this is the interesting times we live in. And before I deal with this issue, let me just flag a civilizational issue. We are very new to rights. 
many of you, many of you, you know, we are old, and democracy since 1950, you can say since 47, a republic since 1950. But actually, the concept of rights-based society is a very new society compared to the thousands and thousands of years that we have. Because we were a society which was not used to rights. Our ancient philosophical underpinnings, moorings were on basis of duties. So rights were very inalien, uh, were alien to our concepts. You had the duty and you had the corresponding duty. Without sounding too nationalistic, in the National Law School, our motto was Dharmo Rakshati Rakshata, which we later understood was in following your dharma is your own dharma, is your own protection. And that was the basic understanding that you do your duty and in, if you do your duty, you will also be protected. But be that as it may, ultimately in 1950, we had the constitution and the constitution actually was rights-based. And it was a revolutionary document, as Shamji was saying, it is a living document, but it was a revolutionary document. We did away with untouchability, we gave in, in Western societies, the suffragettes had to fight for so many years for voting rights. And our citizens just got it like that through a constituent assembly. Equal voting rights for Ambani, Adani, and the man on the street, Ahmadmi, whoever, any person. Woman, man, Dalit, Brahmin, everyone. And rights, and corresponding obligations of the state to follow the rights. Now, what happens here, and according to me, this is the Please tell me when, uh, I'm, unlike Mr. Devan, I'm not having a, just tell me when my time is due. Huh? So, so basically, the fight has been, and in this judgment, they have, everyone has quoted the preamble. This is another thing, this, in our, our courts seem to be so verbose, thousands of pages saying something which, I, as I said, was a no-brainer. Many of them have repeated, some, some have quoted the preamble over and over, over again. And the first word of the preamble is, we. And the first word of the rights is I. So according to me, to put it in one, one catchy phrase, it is the we and the I. And the resolution of the we and the I, and the resolution of this page which I said, is what we have been doing since 1950s. And the court has been repeatedly doing it, trying to resolve we and the I. And as Mr. Devan told you, that this was a case where actually the Supreme Court had, was forced by the government maybe, to actually visit the past cases. And as Justice uh, Nariman, I think, puts it, it was the case of three dissents. And this is the Supreme Court, you can say, uh, a PR exercise where the Supreme Court actually washed its sins and accepted those three dissents. The first dissent was, of course, Murtaza Fazal Ali's judgment in Gopalan's case. Many of you are aware, as it was being said, that we had a compartmentalized fundamental rights concept, that 14, 19, 21 were three distinct compartments. And 21 was viewed independently, that if there is a procedure established by law, that's fine. Fazal Ali said, no, you have to read them together. You have to bring in reasonableness into 21 also. The second dissent was, of course, of Sub Justice Subarao in Kharak Singh's case which was a domiciliary visits case, all of you are aware, and Justice Subha Rao said, no, you have to read in reasonableness, you have to read in privacy. And third, of course, uh, is Justice Khanna's in ADM Jabalpo. And as I said, this is technology, and it, I was not there to hear how, how Mr. Devan was Virat Kohli, but how did I know? It was through live tweets by my juniors from National Law School who were in the court and tweeting away, so that is technology. Imagine if the technology was there when ADM Jabalpur was being argued. Many of you may have read, Granville Austin in his book has written that Niren Deh, who was the AG at that time, the Attorney General, had a foreign wife who was not an Indian citizen. And he did not want to argue this ADM Jabalpur case, but Mrs. Gandhi said, I'll cancel her residency status. I mean, that's the rumor. And he was forced to argue, and it is said that he was actually provoking the judges. He told, the judges asked him, that what, what, what are you submitting? Are you saying that there is, we are powerless? And Nirendra said, yes, in front of you, if I shoot a person, because emergency has been imposed by Mrs. Gandhi, the constitution, is the fundamental rights are suspended, and you cannot do a fig. And he thought that this provocation would work, but it did not. Only Justice Khanna 
spent the descent, and we know what price he paid for that. So according to me, this was a no-brainer, but the court did go into these issues. It overruled ADM Jabalpur, which according to me again was not required, because as you know, the 44th Amendment did away with or clarified in Article 359 that even during emergency, you cannot suspend Article 21 rights. It also dealt with certain other issues which are also important and let's hope in times to come it will deal with it. For example, the right, of, uh, 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 right to sexual orientation and the Supreme Court's very uh, retrograde judgment in Kaushal's case. And that has also been dealt with here. But more importantly, and I'll take two more minutes and I'm done. More importantly, the omissions which I find in this judgment, I know the legal discipline that when it goes to a larger bench, you only concentrate on the remit from the smaller bench. But all, you, all of you know that in the Supreme Court in the United States, everyone gets this 50, uh, just 30 minutes. And that includes, includes, not excludes, includes the interventions from the Supreme Court. I know we can't compare our Supreme Court with the US Supreme Court. Our Supreme Court deals with thousands and thousands of cases, and they deal with just 100. But still, when this matter did go to the larger bench, and I'm told Mr. Devan was one of the very few counsels who actually kept telling the court that we are talking about Adhar. You will find that there's hardly any discussion on the potential. I mean, it is like the elephant is in the room and we are talking about Dworkin and these rights and this and that and sociology and psychology, but nobody is talking about what about the Adhar restrictions? What about the, if privacy is given, what are the reasonable restrictions to this right of privacy? And would the Aadhaar-like situations, what are the, what are, what are the levels of restrictions that you can have? And just to part with a few thoughts, uh, you had Justice Chandrachur in his major opinion, which is described by more than one judge, where he did say that he did lay down certain parameters. For example, the laws in existence, the need for the law, and the, as Mr. Devan said, proportionality. He, he says, suggested that these are the contours of restrictions on the right to privacy. Justice Call incidentally quoted the European Union regulations, and he said that these are the following restrictions on the right to privacy. Other fundamental rights, legitimate national security interest, a criminal offense, and these are the, uh, uh, these are the regular restrictions on the fundamental right to privacy because no right can be absolute. Justice Sapre talked about fair, just fair and reasonable restriction. And most of them, and rightly so said, it has to be decided on a case by case basis. So ultimately, after a thousand page judgment, after people have buried the ghost of ADM Jabbalpur, have said Kaushal's judgment is wrongly decided, ultimately we have nothing. That may be too extreme, but we do have a judgment which says that, yes, privacy is a right. It is a, it is a significant judgment. But when I say we have nothing meaning that, let us contextualize this. My friend just, was just telling me yesterday that he, is the, he was advising the Life Insurance Corporation. And they asked, they have just received instructions from the government that cancel all policies by 31st December if they don't link the policies, insurance policies with Aadhaar. And now this is really a, prob a problem because uh, as the act was referred to, the act only talks about social security measures. But take insurance for example. Insurance is a contract between the party and the insurer. Under what authority of law can you tell a person who's, who's paying his premium that if you don't link with Aadhaar, and there is no law which says you have to link with Aadhaar, 31st December your policy is lapsed. So ultimately, I would say that yes, Landmark case of 2017, Aadhaar is a landmark case of this millennium, this Puttuswami's judgment. But as they say again, to borrow a Hindi phrase, picture abhi bhi baki hai. And let's wish uh, Mr. Devan all the best that he can actually fight and actually get a judgment authoritatively on the actual Aadhaar issue. Thank you.